Hello guys, welcome back to the Learn to Spy YouTube channel and let's see what uh, what we have in for today. So if you follow the Learn to Spy Git repository and the development branch, so there are a few recent changes that I have merged and we are gonna talk about uh, these changes that I have merged. So let's go to the code. So first one, which I want to highlight is that I have modified the build script to create a binary file. So you know that I have been, uh, this build script has been building an ELF file or executable loadable file in the ELF format, but Sometimes I just need the raw binary file, which means that this binary file wouldn't have any header or any metadata on it. So how do you generate that is by using this object copy of the tool chain. And if you scroll up, what does that object copy macro would be is So ELF object copy, so, and the output file format is binary and you create an, uh, so the ELF file, whatever I have, or whatever the build script has generated before that is passed to create a raw binary file. So this wouldn't have any header information on it. And we will see more about this binary file and another change as previously this executable name has always been final load final underscore load dot elf i thought that it would be more appropriate if the elf is named after the application we used to build okay so that's the first change in the build script and the second one which i want to highlight is the changes that gone into the open OCD configuration. First, if you see here, I have removed or I have created one open OCD underscore revision b.cfg file before there were two, one is for RAM and other one is for ROM or for flash. Now I have made this as one file and I see that uh, open OCD and GDB is the most common uh, tools that developers are using even in the embedded development. So I plan to improvise these scripts and uh, the linker scripts as I, as we develop more on this. So I have created two functions in the OpenOCD config file. One would just take in a program or the LFR raw binary file and it would directly load that into the RAM address starting from this 0x8 followed by some zeros and it would also verify that so these are all open OCD commands if you are interested you can just download the open OCD manual to know more about this open OCD commands however these are functions which I have created in this config file and another function which is to load the program into the flash or ROM memory and uh, for now this code or this I have made the change to just erase the first sector so here the sector size is 4k so it just erases the first sector and uh, you can see here yeah, erase and then write the program into the bank with the flash write bank command so these are all again open OCD commands and then it would verify the bank so flash verify bank would verify if this program has been programmed into the flash memory properly or not and right after erasing the flash memory would be just uh, 
would be zero 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 uh, sorry f of f of okay so now let's uh, build the most common LED blink file or the LED blink app and see what this extra changes are what are the benefits of this extra changes so that's the board right now you can see at the bottom right corner so very first I just want to launch the open OCD server other GTP server and then let's build i5 1 iPhone television B board and build LED blink application and if you see here so before we would just uh, before the script would just generate the yellow file now what generates the binary file or raw binary file and the name of this executable has been changed from final load to the to use the application name whatever is passed here okay, now let's connect the HDB client okay now so there are two ways so one is I can just do LED blink dot ELF I'm not doing now I'm not hitting enter but this one is a GDB command so that knows how to handle this yellow file and since this is an yellow file this would have the header or metadata information so right after programming this in the destination memory because this header file will have the target memory location from where this program has to be where this executable should be programmed and right after programming what should be the start address or the entry point so if I go back here and open the AMP script so that should be an entry so here it is the underscore underscore boot underscore entry and that's in the boot.s file So wherever the this function is located, right after programming, the GDB would jump to that location and it would start executing from there. But instead of doing that, let me make this. Oh no. Now we can see the open OCD config file on the right and the GDB terminal client terminal on the left. So instead of doing the load, so very first I just reset and halt. So this monitor, whenever you type monitor in the GDB client terminal, that means that GDB would know that the following command is not an GDB command. Instead, it's it's going to be from the open OCD config. Okay. So if you just do something like uh, Preset and halt, then you can clearly say that GDB would throw an error that could not understand these commands. So, so this monitor and reset halt is nothing but which is already run at the initial stage of this open OCD. So, I'm just rerunning the same command. So, let me extend this 
at the bottom so that you can clearly see what I'm trying to do here. So first, since I have created this function in this config, I should be able to execute this or call this function from the GDB client. So first, how to invoke that as, as I mentioned before, we can just copy this and type in the a monitor to tell the GDB client that this is a this is not a GDB command uh, rather it is a open OCD and then this function needs a, or takes in a argument which is the program name here it's let's try with the binary file because so it says that it cannot open the file that that's because so this the path where this binary is created inside the build and the config file the open OCD config file is inside the tools I don't know this should be okay So that's why I added the comment here, this binary. So whatever the program name or the file that's passed to any function in this open OCD config should be present in the in the same path or you should give the correct path wherever the program is located. So I just copied it here. Now let me run that again. So you can see here, so it has programmed this in the RAM memory starting at address 0x8 followed by seven zeros. But here is the uh, difference, like if you dump hex dump LED. So that's it. So if you see this binary file, it starts with address 000. zero, zero and these are nothing but the opcodes or risk file opcodes or machine codes and there is no header file nothing so the gdb client wouldn't know after programming what next so that's when we instruct the gdb to jump to the start address and since this is an address we prefix with the star and paste and by typing this command, you are in telling GDB to jump to this location and execute. So before that, I just want to pull up the uh, board view. So the moment I hit this command, so the execution would jump into the starters of the RAM and that would execute because that's where the LED blink binary is programmed. Okay, so that's about the binary file that has been uh, generated and programming that into the RAM memory and execution. Similarly, I have created this function to load the program into the flash and uh, feel free to try this. Otherwise, I will try to come, uh, cover this in my uh, next video. And another important thing I just want to mention before I close this is I'm trying to create this interrupt underscore direct dot s file so it's in development so there are two ways that the interrupts can be handled one is the vector and the direct mode which i have discussed in the previous video so the main purpose of this uh, direct interrupt handling is to demonstrate 
how to what are the things to handle or how to store and restore registers before handling any uh, traps because when the execution jumps from anywhere in the user space to to the trap handler either because of an exception or due to an interrupt so very first thing the state variables or here in this case all the at least the registers and a lot more should be saved but for now i'm trying to store all those uh, registers that's that should be stored and then the interrupt should be handled and when it comes out of the interrupt handling all those register values should be uh, restored back so this is what i'm i'm trying to uh, do in this file and uh, once this is complete then in the config any code we should be able to just switch as the include and config so any application should work with both uh, vector mode and direct mode so the advantage of the direct mode is that where is the file okay because for all the interrupts or the exceptions it would be just the same address and it would be easy to have this one set of code to store and restore these registers however i find that the existing interrupt vector handling so here the execution would jump into the uh, corresponding for example external interrupts would come into a different address location so for every location it has to these registers has to be stored and restored that's why i thought it would be easy for now at least i just want to demonstrate this uh, storing and restoring this registers in the direct mode first okay and i'm try i'm also trying to build bootstrapping that's why if you see here the initial startup code file has been changed as boot and uh, as a part of this bootstrapping a risk file what are the things that should be handled before uh, this execution jumps into the real application is to set the stack pointer then trap base and uh, a pmp should be configured and the user entry point all those should be configured and also if you see the rams are uh, the linker script i have created one region for the stack and another region for the trap frame is nothing but the frame of the state or the variables or the registers whatever is stored here so this this would be considered as a trap frame and when the execution jumps into that trap okay and uh, until I develop further code, uh, so reach me out either in the GitHub repo or by the comments on this uh, video below. I will try my best to answer any of your questions. And until then, yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.